So I wrote this book in 2015, and one of the most common questions I get is, is SketchUp to Layout still relevant for the most current version of SketchUp and Layout? So in this video, we're gonna dive into the book and just kind of review exactly what it's all about. And then I'm gonna show you four major changes that have happened to SketchUp and Layout since I wrote this book. Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. So the reason why I haven't updated this book yet is because it's still very relevant. I mean, most of the changes that have happened over the years don't really change the fundamental workflows and tools that you're gonna learn in this book. And one of the big reasons for that is because you actually don't learn how to model in this book. I wrote this book with the assumption that you understand how to do basic navigation and you know creating geometry in SketchUp. But what this book does is teaches you the organizational theory, you know, how do you organize your groups and components and how do you assign layers to control the visibility of the objects in your model in order to prepare your model for layout. So let's go ahead and dive in and just do a brief overview of what is actually in this book. So you can get the paperback uh, version here, uh, sketchuptolayout.com. We're actually gonna also, in this video, we're gonna look at the ebook version, which is available in PDF and popular ebook formats as well. So the PDF is actually bookmarked really well, so you can navigate around to any part of the book by just uh, looking in the bookmarks. And if we go down to the table of contents, these are actually hot linked as well. So you can click on any part of this and jump right to that section. So for instance, if we wanted to look at the advanced scenes for layout section, we could just click on this link and it brings us right here. So I'm gonna jump back to the table of contents here and we're gonna just go briefly over all of these different subjects here and just kind of give you an idea of like what you're gonna learn when you buy this book if you if you don't own it already. And again, this is one of the big reasons why the book is still so relevant because I didn't include any beginner modeling section to teach you how to actually model. Instead, I suggest relying on my website and my YouTube channel to learn all of those basics. So you can essentially purchase this book and then you know learn all of the basic stuff for free on my website and on my YouTube channel. So the book is basically split into three parts. So the this whole section here talks about how to organize the structure of your model using groups and components and how to assign them to layers so you have control over the visibility of the different parts of the model. And then we review the overall workflow on how your model links up to layout, how that relationship works, how you can bounce between the two programs, how to create viewports of your SketchUp model. And we spend a lot of time talking about scenes because scenes are the most important aspect of bringing your SketchUp model into layout. So if we look at this, for instance, you know, this is really a good illustration of kind of the whole anatomy of a scene. You know, you first will limit the visible objects that are in your model by hiding layers. And then you will define your foreground depth and your background depth, which are optional. Most times you you want to see, you know, the entire depth of the scene, but these are certainly things that you can do using section planes, fog, and a few other tricks to limit the depth of the scene. And then you wanna set your camera perspective, so that's actually orienting the camera to you know the position and whether it's parallel projection or perspective mode, and then finally creating your style. So once you've configured these, you save it as a scene, and then those scenes can be assigned to viewports and layout. And that's really the fundamental principle behind preparing your model for layout. And actually there's a really good chart in here that kind of visualizes the whole relationship that scenes have. And you can see how important they are. So you start up here with, you know, just the general organization 
of your model using groups and components and how you can have, you know, different entities nested within multiple groups and components. So you have a whole, you know, hierarchy of structure uh, that creates your basic organizational structure of your model. And then from there, the, the secondary control that you have over what's visible is using layers. So layers are gonna be able to control multiple objects at the same time, which is really important and really handy when you're trying to produce a scene that you want to bring into layout. Now scenes are not just saving a camera position. Scenes will actually save all of these different properties. So section planes, a lot of global settings that are controlled by styles, fog, axes location, hidden geometry, and your shadow settings. So all of these settings can be unique for each scene. So the book does spend a lot of time reviewing how scenes work and really none of this has changed over the years. These are fundamental things that everybody needs to know if you're using SketchUp Pro and Layout. And then moving on from there, I included a small section on BIM modeling because I found that really interesting. Back in 2015, we started to see the inclusion of IFC imports. So this goes over how to use the dynamic component feature in SketchUp Pro to assign any type of metadata that you want to your model. Now you can actually extrapolate dynamic data as well, including like length and width and all sorts of different things that are parametric to, you know, the shape of the component itself. And then you can extract that data using the label tool in layout. So this was, this was a really cool study on how to, how to do exactly that. And then I also talked about the classification tool, which is typically used for IFC. I was kind of hoping that this would be expanded to kind of create your own, you know, custom tagging system, but I haven't really seen anybody use it for anything other than IFC. Now, in 2018, I think it was, we did get the additional advanced attributes that became available to the components, but it was kind of limited because it's, it's literally just these five attributes that are available to assign, you know, a string data to for all components. So there's no way to like create your own uh, custom attributes for the components. So I was, you know, that's a, it's a small feature that has been added, but it's, it really doesn't change anything as far as, you know, the workflow that I have in the book currently. Now, the second part of the book takes a deep dive into layout. So we start out with the user interface, explain how all the different elements work in layout, opening a new file, inserting SketchUp models, all of this stuff works exactly the way it did back in 2015. Now, adding dimensions, this has changed slightly. Um, there've been a few improvements to layout dimensions, such as being able to scale a dimension without breaking the anchor link, and a lot of improvements in how the text of a dimension can snap to different locations in a dimension. So those are all minor improvements that don't really change what is talked about in the book, but are more kind of additional features that have just kind of improved the overall functionality of dimensions. And we go over all the different annotation tools, uh, text box, auto text, how to edit all of this stuff, patterns, hatching, using scrapbooks to save elements and place them into your layout document and so on and so forth. So it's it's an overall deep dive into layout, but you know, it doesn't go over every single little property and setting. You know, that's what the official documentation is for. This just pairs down the most important information you need to know to get up and running with layout as quick as possible. So once you understand how to use layout and its relationship to SketchUp, we review a number of advanced techniques for creating sections through your model and different hatching techniques as well. And finally, the third part of the book explores three separate projects. So it starts with a table project, goes into a kitchen project, and then a full house project. So you really get a complete overview of you know the different types of projects that you can use SketchUp and Layout on uh, to create construction documents. 
Okay, so what are the four big changes that we've seen in SketchUp and Layout? So number one is the table tool in Layout. So it used to be a real pain to create any type of schedule like this. You'd have to create a text box and you know type out one text box at a time, then you'd have to create another text box, and you'd have to kind of build these these boxes all together and go to the shape style and add a stroke and then you know try to snap these things together and build you know the table manually well now we have a built-in table tool that allows you to create as many cells as you want so if i want you know something like this i click once and then i can click to scale it so i set the size and now we have a special table object that we can use and then you just double click to jump inside and then you can select all the individual cells and double click to add text and the right click menu also gives you a number of you know spreadsheet or table specific options so if i wanted to insert another row i can do that and it just is much easier way to create tables like this so this was this was a great addition to layout and one of the things that is really cool about it is you can actually import CSV or uh, you know comma separated value or tab separated value spreadsheets or Excel files directly so you can import those directly into layout and the thing that's really cool is they act like how viewports work with SketchUp models so you can actually link an external spreadsheet to layout and then update that reference at any time if that spreadsheet has changed now if you look at how that relates to SketchUp SketchUp also had their generate report feature improved quite a bit. So the idea is that you can create a report from your SketchUp model, export that as a spreadsheet, and then you could import that spreadsheet into layout and have your schedules created somewhat automatically. Now, I personally am kind of upset about this feature. Like I wish they had gone just a little bit further with the generate report feature because I feel like the problem is that you have to export from SketchUp to a spreadsheet. Then you have to import that spreadsheet into layout every single time there's a change. It's not an automatic link like how viewports work. I mean, with viewports, you just update the reference and it and it brings in those changes. So I really wish that SketchUp would implement uh, an improved feature for Generate Report where you could just you know, select a table and attach a specific SketchUp model to it and then either retrieve a number of preset reports that you've created in the SketchUp model or even better, if you could configure the report right from in layout to get exactly the data you want and then you would just be you know, updating that reference to make sure it's pulling you know, the most recent up-to-date data. So regardless, tables are still an awesome feature that was not launched when I wrote SketchUp to Layout in 2015. Now the second big change that we've seen is section planes. So in addition to having a name and symbol being added to the section plane, which is really cool because now you can essentially bring that right into Layout and you'll be able to see you know these actual labels and use them directly from the viewport instead of having to manually recreate these symbols in layout. So that's a great feature right there. Now the biggest change that provides you an additional option when you're creating your scenes for layout is section fill. So they added section fill, which fills in the, wherever the section is cutting through a solid object in your model, it fills it with a solid color. So in the past, we always had this ugly interior look into the model and we always had to come up with kind of workarounds to make this look better. So now we have this additional option where we can just fill that with a solid color and sometimes you can reduce the number of viewports that you stack in layout in order to get the desired look that you want. The third feature that is really a big deal is scaled drawing 
in layout. So right inside layout, you can now create a scaled drawing so you can select a scale and then anything that you draw will now be drawn to that scale. So now you can use real dimensions. So if I type in a dimension as I draw this line, it's actually gonna draw it to the scale that I am now inside of. So this basically makes layout a complete drawing tool in and of itself. So before we could only draw in paper space, but now essentially we can create these scaled drawing viewports that we can draw within. And it really just provides more options for you when you're working in layout. And the fourth feature that is a really big deal is the dashed lines feature that we just got in 2019. Now, this is great because now, instead of having to either explode lines or draw lines manually in layout, you can now assign a dash style to layers and then any geometry that is on that layer will inherit that dash style. So again, this is a feature that really doesn't change the fundamentals that you're gonna learn in this book, but it's just an added feature that if I were to you know, write this book today, I would definitely be including it. All right, so that's it for this video. If you wanna purchase the book, you can go to sketchuptolayout.com and buy either the ebook version, the paperback version. I also have two additional versions of the book that include some additional packages and a video course as well that fully complements the book that I've outlined here. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the thumbs up on this video and I will see you in the next video.